Hello, today we'll be going through practice questions 51 to 60 for the CompTIA Sizer Plus exam. Let's begin. While reviewing web server logs, an analyst notices several entries with the same timestamps, but all contain odd characters in the request line. Which of the following steps should be taken next? The correct answer is B. Determine what attack the odd characters are indicative of. The next step should be to analyze the unusual log entries to identify whether they are part of a known attack pattern, such as SQL injection, cross-site scripting, or command injection. Recognizing the nature of the attack will guide further actions in the incident response process. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Shut the network down immediately and call the next person in the chain of command. This is a drastic step without sufficient evidence of a critical impact. It may cause unnecessary disruption. C. Utilize the correct attack framework and determine what the incident response will consist of. This is more appropriate after identifying the type of attack. Frameworks are useful for planning a response, not the immediate next step when facing unclear logs. D. Notify the local law enforcement for incident response. Law enforcement is contacted for confirmed incidents with legal implications. At this point, the nature and scope of the attack are still unknown. Therefore, the correct answer is B. A security team conducts a lessons learned meeting after struggling to determine who should conduct the next steps following a security event. Which of the following should the team create to address this issue? The correct answer is... C. Incident Response Plan An incident response plan defines roles, responsibilities, and procedures to follow during and after a security incident. Since the team struggled with knowing who should take the next steps, an IRP would resolve this by clearly assigning duties during various phases of incident handling. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Service Level Agreement this defines performance expectations between a service provider and a client, not internal roles in incident response. B. Change management plan. This governs how changes to IT systems are proposed, reviewed, and implemented, not how to respond to security incidents. D. Memorandum of understanding. An MOU is an agreement between two parties outlining shared responsibilities or collaboration not internal incident response procedures. Therefore, the correct answer is C. A cybersecurity analyst notices unusual network scanning activity coming from a country that the company does not do business with. Which of the following is the best mitigation technique? The correct answer is A. Geoblock the offending source country. Geoblocking the entire country is the most effective long-term mitigation when traffic is coming from a region your company does not do business with. It prevents not only the current malicious IPs, but also other potential sources in that country from reaching your network. Why the other options are incorrect? B. Block the IP range of the scans at the network firewall. This may be effective short-term, but doesn't scale well and can miss future threats from different IP ranges in the same country. C. Perform a historical trend analysis and look for similar scanning activity. This is useful for investigation but not a mitigation technique. It doesn't stop the current threat. D. Block the specific IP address of the scans at the network firewall. Blocking a single IP is ineffective against distributed scanning or IP rotation tactics commonly used in such attacks. Therefore, the correct answer is A. An analyst has received an IPS event notification from the SIEM stating an IP address, which is known to be malicious, has attempted to exploit a zero-day vulnerability on several web servers. The exploit contained the following snippet. Which of the following controls would work best to mitigate the attack represented by this snippet? The correct answer is A. Limit user creation to administrators only. The exploit is trying to abuse a vulnerable WordPress plugin endpoint to create a user with administrator privileges using the WP insert user function. The best mitigation is to ensure that only legitimate administrators can create new users, especially with elevated privileges. Why the other options are incorrect? 
B. Limit layout creation to administrators only. While this might reduce some attack surface, the core issue is unauthorized user creation, not layout editing. C. Set the directory TRX add-ons to read-only for all users. Making the directory read-only doesn't prevent exploitation of code vulnerabilities inside it. It could also break legitimate plugin functionality. D. Set the directory v2 to read-only for all users. Similarly, setting this directory to read-only won't prevent execution of the vulnerable code and might break plugin operations. Therefore, the correct answer is A. A penetration tester submitted data to a form in a web application, which enabled the penetration tester to retrieve user credentials. Which of the following should be recommended for remediation of this application vulnerability? The correct answer is C. Performing input validation before allowing submission. The ability to submit crafted input and retrieve user credentials indicates an input validation vulnerability, such as SQL injection or another injection flaw. Validating and sanitizing user input prevents attackers from injecting malicious payloads that exploit the application. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Implementing multi-factor authentication on the server OS. This secures admin access to the OS, not the application-level vulnerability being exploited through a web form. B. Hashing user passwords on the web application. While password hashing is important, it does not prevent exploitation via form injection or other input-based attacks. D. Segmenting the network between the users and the web server. Network segmentation limits lateral movement but doesn't fix the root cause. Poor input handling on the web application itself. Therefore, the correct answer is C. A cybersecurity team lead is developing metrics to present in the weekly executive briefs. Executives are interested in knowing how long it takes to stop the spread of malware that enters the network. Which of the following metrics should the team lead include in the briefs? The correct answer is D. Mean time to contain. Mean time to contain measures how long it takes to stop the spread or impact of an incident, like malware, after detection. Since the executives are specifically interested in how long it takes to stop the spread, MTTC is the most relevant metric. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Mean time between failures. This is used in system reliability to measure uptime and failure frequency, not relevant to malware response. B. Mean time to detect. This measures how long it takes to identify an incident, not how long it takes to stop the spread. C. Mean time to remediate. This refers to the time taken to fully fix and recover from an incident, which could be longer than containment. Containment happens before remediation. Therefore, the correct answer is D. A cloud team received an alert that unauthorized resources were being auto-provisioned. After investigating, the team suspects that crypto mining is occurring. Which of the following indicators would most likely lead the team to this conclusion? The correct answer is A. High GPU utilization. Crypto mining operations typically require significant GPU or CPU resources to perform hashing computations. A sudden or sustained spike in GPU utilization is a strong indicator that crypto mining might be occurring. Why the other options are incorrect? B. Bandwidth consumption. Crypto mining uses relatively low bandwidth since it mainly sends small result sets back to the mining pool, not bulk data transfers. C. Unauthorized changes. This is a broad indicator and does not specifically point to crypto mining activity. D. Unusual traffic spikes. While possible in other types of attacks, crypto mining usually doesn't generate high outbound network traffic. Therefore, the correct answer is A. A company's security team is updating a section of the reporting policy that pertains to inappropriate use of resources. Besides the security team, which of the following groups should the issue be escalated to first in order to comply with industry best practices? The correct answer is C. Legal department. The legal department should be the first group the security team escalates the issue to. Installing crypto miners on corporate workstations is a misuse of company resources and possibly a legal or regulatory violation. 
Legal professionals can assess liability, advise on internal actions, and determine whether law enforcement or other parties should be contacted. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Help Desk. The Help Desk is responsible for technical support, not for handling policy violations or legal concerns. B. Law Enforcement. Escalating directly to law enforcement without first consulting legal may expose the company to legal risk or violate internal procedures. D. Board Member. The board is not involved in day-to-day -day operational incidents and should only be notified if the incident escalates to a strategic or reputational risk level. Therefore, the correct answer is C. Given the following CVSS string, which of the following attributes correctly describes this vulnerability? The correct answer is D. The complexity to exploit the vulnerability is high. The CVSS vector contains ACH, which clearly indicates that the exploit requires a more complex setup or specific conditions, meaning the complexity is high. Why the other options are incorrect? A. A user is required to exploit this vulnerability. The vector shows UIN, meaning no user interaction is needed, so this is false. B. The vulnerability is network-based. AVL means the attacker needs local access, not network-based access. C. The vulnerability does not affect confidentiality. C. H means high impact on confidentiality, so this is incorrect. Therefore, the correct answer is D. A security analyst must preserve a system hard drive that was involved in a litigation request. Which of the following is the best method to ensure the data on the device is not modified? The correct answer is A. Generate a hash value and make a backup image. The best method to preserve a system hard drive for litigation is to create a forensic image and generate a hash to prove the image has not been altered. This ensures data integrity and supports chain of custody requirements. Why the other options are incorrect? B. Encrypt the device to ensure confidentiality of the data. Encryption protects confidentiality, not integrity. It also alters the drive and may interfere with forensic analysis. C. Protect the device with a complex password. A password may prevent casual access, but it does not preserve the drive in its current state or ensure forensic integrity. D. Perform a memory scan dump to collect residual data. A memory dump is volatile data and does not address preserving the hard drive. It's a separate forensic task, not the best method in this context. Therefore, the correct answer is A. We have come to the end of today's video. If you liked the video, please make sure to like and subscribe. Goodbye.